I want to say good morning to all the kids who are downstairs and also who might be watching uh, online. We're glad that you are here and in Sunday school this morning. And I want to talk to you a little bit about the season we're in called Lent. And you may notice one thing that's different. I have a different colored stole. You see I have purple on. We have purple up here at the communion table. And, and purple is the color that we use for the season of Lent. And if you see my stole, you'll also see it has green here. Um, it's like a, a plant and leaves kind of going up the side. And in the middle of Lent, we also think about the hope of spring coming and the greening of the earth as well um, in this season. Now, an important Bible story for the beginning of Lent is a story about Jesus where he goes into the wilderness for 40 days and he's there to search himself and, and think about, is he doing the right thing and self-examination. Uh, he's there for 40 days and we call that uh, temptation. He was there to be tempted. Now that's, that's a big word. What exactly do you think temptation is? Well, maybe it's something like, you see something you really want that's not yours and Maybe it belongs to your friend or you're in the store and you think nobody's looking and, and you just think, it's going to be okay if I take it. Nobody will really miss it. I know it's wrong, but it's going to be okay. That, that's what temptation is. And you see how you kind of justify that it's going to be okay, even though it's really wrong. That, that's sort of what temptation is like. Or you might think, you know, I'm going to, uh, it'd be really funny if I teased someone and if I say this, it's People are going to laugh, but then it actually hurts that person and it's not funny to them. And we're tempted to say something that, that we know we really shouldn't. And you might think of other things of what temptation is. So what we do during this time is we're especially mindful of just that voice that we hear sometimes that makes us less than our best self. And we ask God to help us so we can be our best selves. And I know that you have a lesson that's gonna help you think about that and learn more about Lent. So thanks for um, watching us downstairs and um, I hope you have a good Sunday school class. We're gonna go ahead with our worship now as we listen to the scripture message. I'll be reading from John 11, verse 17 through 44. When they arrived at Bethany, they were told that Lazarus had already been in his tomb for four days. Bethany was only a couple of miles down the road from Jerusalem, and many of the Jewish leaders had come to pay their respects and to console Martha and Mary on their loss. When Martha got word that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Sir, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. And even now, it's not too late, for I know that God will bring my brother back to life again, if you will only ask him to. Jesus told her, your brother will come back to life again. Yes, Martha said, when everyone else does on resurrection day. Jesus told her, I am the one who raises the dead and gives them life again. Anyone who believes in me, even though he dies like anyone else, shall live again. He is given eternal life for believing in me and shall never perish. Do you believe this, Martha? Yes, Master, she told him. I believe you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one we have so long awaited. Then she left him and returned to Mary, and calling her aside from the mourners, told her, He is here, and he wants to see you. So Mary went to him at once. Now Jesus had stayed <clears throat> outside the village at a place where Martha had met him. When the Jewish leaders who were at the house tried to consult Mary, saw her leave so hastily, they assumed she was going to Lazarus' tomb to weep, so they followed her. When Mary arrived where Jesus was, she fell down at his feet, saying, 
Sir, if you had been here, my brother would still be alive. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jewish leaders wailing with her, he was moved with indignation and troubled thoughts. Where is he buried, he asked them. They told him, come and see. Tears came to Jesus' eyes. They were close friends, the Jewish leader said. See how much he loved him. But some, this fellow healed a blind man. Why couldn't he keep Lazarus from dying? And again, Jesus was moved with deep anger. Then they came to the tomb. It was a cave with a heavy stone rolled across its door. Roll the stone aside, Jesus told them. But Martha, the dead man's sister, said, but now the smell will be terrible, for he has been dead for four days. But didn't I tell you that you will see this wonderful miracle from God if you believe, Jesus asked her. So they rolled the stone aside. Then Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, thank you for hearing me. You always hear me, of course, but I said it because of all these people standing here so that they will believe you sent me. Then he shouted, Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus came, bound up in the grave cloth, his face muscled in a head swath, and Jesus told him, unwrap him and let him go. Mm -hmm.